Hey guys, Carl from Pro from Place. This video is going to be a bit of a supplement to my top 10 new to me games of 2023 that I did put on the channel recently. If you haven't gone and seen that, definitely go check it out at the link above. But I wanted to add to that list because while I did discover a whole lot of really fun games and I did put them up on that list, also on my channel, I do a whole lot of preview coverage for upcoming Kickstarter games because I am the kind of person who loves to always be discovering new games, and that's one great way to do it. But what that means is I very often preview these games for Kickstarter or game found campaigns, and then when they release, I do play through them and I do enjoy them, and I often post about them on Instagram or Blue Sky or Twitter or whatever else you've got. But I very rarely come back and do another follow-up video on them because I'm always covering something else and I don't always have the time to slot in these games that I've already covered before. But what that means is there are a lot of really, really good games that come to crowdfunding and if I focused on top 10 new to me games every year, those games would never make the list because they would have come out after I sort of played them for the first time and they're no longer new to me from that year and very often they get skipped over and I want to make sure that I talk about those games because some of these games are really, really great. And also, as this are games that I've previewed, that means they haven't yet come out. So this is kind of like a list of games that are coming out in this year or potentially the next year if things get delayed that I do really recommend that you check out or go out and look for. And a lot of these games will get retail versions after they've fulfilled from the campaign. So this is sort of like an early warning or an early sort of suggestion to you. Keep these games on your radar. They're coming soon. They're a whole lot of fun. So I do like to add in, and we're only going to do top five for this one because I don't have a whole lot of games that I covered in crowdfunding, but I did have around 10 to 15 games that I took a look at, and of those, I'm going to share with you my top five. All right, so starting from the bottom and working our way up, but at number five, it's not really the bottom by any means. This game is Peacemakers Horrors of War, the follow-up to Dawn of Peacemakers from Snowdale Design. This is a very unique sort of war game that's actually an anti-war game in which you, every scenario you're playing as a faction of some kind of animal that's sort of going into a war between other animal factions that are at war and your job is to sort of hold off the war, limit the sort of casualties on either side, work to sort of manipulate the war in certain different ways to sort of make sure that nobody kills off the other team. You're sort of working to cause a ceasefire somehow in each of the scenarios in this game. And that's one big thing about this game that's really, really cool and really, really interesting, aside from the fact that you're trying to stop war rather than fight, is that there are so many scenarios in this game. Each scenario, you're playing sort of in amongst a war of different kinds of factions that will react in different ways, have different sort of personalities or strategies about how they act in war and you can choose from a variety of different factions yourself and each of these times particularly the first time that you're playing through any of these scenarios it's not just about stopping the war but it's actually about understanding how the war is playing out how each faction is working in the war what you need to do best to sort of stop the factions on their own side sort of pushing them to do some damage, but pulling them back from doing too much damage to sort of keep the sort of fear level or strength levels of each side somewhat balanced so that at the end is a, peace fire, a ceasefire rather than somebody getting sort of eliminated from the world. And it's this really cool, puzzly kind of solving how the puzzle is playing out and then figuring out how to sort of get into that puzzle and do your own thing to tweak it and work it in such a way that things do work out as that sort of middling sort of balanced ceasefire condition. And the way that you're doing it is basically a sort of multi-use card game system where you're playing cards to move around the map or sort of build up fortifications to block certain enemies from hitting other enemies. And these card, this card play is really unique because each of the different factions is going to have different ways. Some of them move faster, some of them protect better, some of them sort of get through the cards better. And you're also using the cards to look at the sort of AI or sort of personality card deck of each of the enemy groups to figure out and to sort of predict what they're going to be doing next so that your actions can work at the right time to sort of prevent or encourage certain actions from each of the sides in the battle. This game is a whole lot of fun. 
the preview version that I had only had three-ish scenarios in it and the full campaign, or not campaign because they are one-off scenarios, but the full set of scenarios is going to be somewhere around 10. Sorry, I don't remember the exact number, but the point is there are many, many, many scenarios that I haven't yet tried with many, many different factions that I saw in the box but didn't have the ability to do anything with yet. I am very excited for this one to ship to see exactly what all of these new scenarios bring in and I can't wait to dive into this one more. Number four is another game in the Ulos universe or the role player universe, if you prefer, from Thunderworks Games. You can see here Dawn of Ulos sitting on my shelf. I can't wait to try that out and get a video out for you on the channel. But this game is Stone Spine Architects. This is a sort of small box game a la Cartographers, another game in the same series from them that combines very nicely a sort of card drafting system with a tile laying system with a spatial puzzle kind of building of a map type system. I really had a lot of fun with this one. On your turn, you're drafting sort of map cards from an available set of cards, placing those map cards out into a grid of tiles, although each round you're only filling in one, round, one row of that grid, filling in that grid, trying to connect the pathways in the map to the entrance of this sort of maze, as well as eventually to the exit of the maze to score points, trying also along the way to fulfill certain locations or certain types of rooms in certain places or certain creatures or traps or items in those rooms based on a goal scoring card you have at the start of the game to sort of maximize scoring along the way. But then also an extra twist to this is you're sort of developing income based on the cards you're drafting and the treasure chests that are in your maze. And based on sort of an initiative leveling of that money, you then have the ability to spend that money, but also sort of initiative ordering of going to a marketplace and buying additional pieces that you slot into your board that can add more of those enemies into the map, can add more of these treasure chests, can actually add secret passageways that open different locations into different places to help connect to the entrance and exit. But also you then have this sort of initiative level of drafting additional scoring goals that add scoring based on things and connections and so on in your tableau as well. So you've got this sort of starting at the beginning of the game and goal scoring. You've got the scoring based on the pathways you're making, but also as you're playing, you're drafting the map cards as well as new individual or moving through mid-game scoring conditions, adding in new pieces to your map. Just a whole lot of fun. I'm a big fan of drafting kind of games as well as tile laying games as well as spatial puzzle a whole lot of fun here the ai actually works really well as well because there are symbols on the card so when you draft a card any card that has a symbol that the ai wants they will take that so you're sort of trying to place cards in such a way that you're helping yourself but also preventing the ai from getting cards this one is just about fulfilling right now. I cannot wait to get my hands back on this copy because the preview copy did go away. This one will definitely be a fun addition to my collection and will stay in the collection for quite a while. That is Stone Spine Architects. Number three on this list was a giant surprise for me that I was very, very happy to be able to get a chance to preview. This is a new game from a new publisher called Moon Crab Games, and that game is Leviathan Wilds. This game is basically Shadows of the Colossus turned into board game form. If you're not aware of Shadows of the Colossus, it was an old game, PlayStation game, PlayStation 1 or 2, I don't remember, sorry. We were sort of this adventure out on a journey and you'd find these giant colossi and you had to climb to the top and find a way to sort of beat them in a specific way to take them down. Well, in this game, you're not really taking them down. Instead, all of these giant creatures, the leviathons, are sort of blighted by some strange affliction. And they've got these sort of crystals that grow on them from the blight. And it's your job to sort of scale these massive beasts and sort of smash away these crystals to sort of clear them of the blight and sort of save the world or revitalize these massive creatures living in your world. And the theming of this is super, super cool. But more than that, the ability that they had or how successful they were at taking this idea of these massive creatures that you're climbing up, trying to get to certain locations to sort of beat up, and these creatures sort of confused and angry and blighted and sort of 
upset from a variety of different reasons, now have these people climbing up the side of them. And of course, they're fighting back and trying to knock you off and hurt you while you're trying to get all of this stuff done. And the theming, again, of this game just is super, super cool. But then the gameplay here is also very cool. There's this sort of spatial map movement puzzle of how you're climbing, how you're jumping, how you're swinging, how you're sort of gliding from one place down to another place using a multi-use card based system where you're playing cards for energy points that allow you to do things like climb and hit and jump and glide and so on around this creature. But then you can also play those cards for the abilities on the card that give you all kinds of special jumps or special attacks or different ways that you can interact with the board and the creature themselves. There are a variety of different climbers in this game that have specific unique powers of blocking or healing or extra attack or extra sort of acrobatic jumps and swings. Really, really, really cool card use system. Also, your deck of cards is sort of your stamina. And as the cards run out, you're going to fall if you don't have enough cards left in your hand. So you kind of have to time the way you climb so that when you fall, you land on platforms rather than falling all the way down to the bottom because this thing is beating on you and it is sort of a timed event that you gotta hurry and most efficiently climb to all the spots you need to get to and smash all of those crystals before the Leviathan basically eliminates you from the map as well. Really, really cool theme, really fun card play, very fun movement puzzle on the board. Each of the Leviathans also, it's a really cool system. Rather than having a board, there's a spiral bound book and every time you turn the page, it's a new Leviathan, new map, new scenario, new goals, new sort of interactive me mechanisms with how they work and what your goals are supposed to be. And it's a two page spread for each Leviathan that has this sort of map that you're climbing around on or the creature's body that you're climbing around. Some of them turn vertically so you have to climb really high up. Some of them are wide. Some of them have like small pieces all over that you have to sort of jump from piece to piece. Just really, really had a blast with this one and cannot wait to see how the finalized product for this one turns out. Number two on my list is another surprise that really shouldn't have been a surprise because of all the sort of hype. Not hype because that sounds negative, but all of the fanfare that this company continues to get. And this company is Post Curious, who's sort of popular or famous for these really thematic and cool sort of escape room in a box or puzzle in a box kind of games. And as a fan of things like Unlock and Exit and all of these sort of puzzly escape room kind of games that I've played through, this is a company that I've had my eye on for a while, but for some reason never took the plunge to try out any of these games. So when the ability to cover this game came towards me, I instantly jumped at the opportunity because I was very excited to see this. This game is the Morrison Game Factory. This is the newest crowdfunded puzzle box from Post Curious in which you sort of play the role of somebody who stumbles upon this old sort of dilapidated rundown board game factory and you find this sort of stack of documents and a bunch of random assorted game pieces and then through the use of these documents, those pieces, and a really cool online system that pulls you into the thematic world of the story around this game company, narrated through all of these really interesting puzzles to solve along the way, sort of blew my mind. I haven't seen anything done like this in a puzzle game before, and I had a ton of fun with this one. The puzzles are really interesting. I'm somebody who does a lot of puzzle games, and a lot of times I play a game and I say, okay, I know how to solve this puzzle already. Okay, I know how to solve this puzzle already. I've seen this in another game. I've seen this in another game. And a lot of the puzzles in this game are things that I've never seen before, are unique ways to interact with components that I've never seen before, use the online system in really interesting ways. Nothing ever felt brutally hard to solve, but everything was definitely clever and made me think about things in different ways to solve the puzzles. And then more importantly, when things weren't instantly solvable, there's a very nice hint system through that same online portal that does guide you rather than give you answers, rather than say, try this. It really does guide you through sort of logically step-by-step step, how to get to the next piece of the puzzle so that you can then solve the rest of the puzzle yourself. 
great system, great theming, really cool narrative story that plays through. And then after covering this, now I've gone back and played a few more of those of their, their puzzle boxes and hope to play a whole lot more, eventually all of them, if I can get my hands on them, because I love everything I've seen from Post Curious. And Morrison Game Factory still is one of the favorites of theirs that I've played. Definitely, if you're a fan of puzzle box games, escape room games, Keep an eye out for this one when it does start funding. I guarantee they'll be selling this on their website at some point in the future. Check this one out if you're a fan of puzzles because boy, was this a lot of fun. All right then, my number one crowdfunded game of 2023. Another one that I was so thankful that I was given the opportunity to preview because this is a huge game and I'm not really a huge channel, but I love, love, love this game. And that is Stone Saga from Open Owl Studios. You can see I've already got a couple of their games behind me. Stars of Akarios down here. Mythwind review coming very soon. Stone Saga is this really epic, and I don't use that word lightly, epic open world survival sort of culture building experience in a box. This is really, really unique and very, very fun experience, at least from what I've seen so far in the preview. And you're sort of playing this sort of tribe of cave people almost way back in history in this strange world, exploring the world, learning how to forage, how to fish, how to find resources, going down in caves, exploring. But all along the way, the game is giving you sort of little goals at the beginning, you know, scavenge this much, build a tool, build a hut, search for this, find a new location. These sort of mini goals along the way, but every time you trigger something, it's telling you more story about the world that you're living in and things that are going on. And you really do feel this evolution of yourself and your group growing and playing and sort of thriving and not thriving, sort of surviving in this world. You need to feed people. You need to come up with ways to develop new tools and new technologies to build better buildings that give you more abilities. The tool crafting system in this game is really cool because you've got these resources and the resources can all be sort of manipulated or refined in some way. You can cook things, you can you know, carve things, cut things to turn the resources into better resources. And then the resource system or the sort of tool building system is real cool because each of the cards has different symbols on each side. And you have to actually physically think about how do these things fit together to make new things. Like maybe if I have a stick and I have a stone and I put the stone on the side of the stick, I've got an ax. And if I put the stone on top of the stick, I got a spear. And you can try different ways to sort of rotate the cards and fit all these cards together to create or fail to create new technology, new tools, new things that you can use to interact with the world around you. The story that's building is really, really cool. The sense of exploration, there are symbols that are hidden on cards and in locations and so on that if you find them, you can sort of discover other hidden stuff in the world. The system continues to grow. There are these giant beasts that come in later on that you have to sort of study and learn about and figure out their weaknesses so that you can either take them down or find a way to sort of coexist with them. Just a sprawling, really sort of lifelike, growing, expanding world that you're struggling and surviving through, but also growing and learning and I don't know how else to explain this. It's been a while since I've played, so I can't remember all of the unique details, just that the feeling of thrill of playing through this, the experience of this game was just a whole lot of fun. Now, while I'm here, just quickly, I know some of you are concerned or curious whether Stone Saga and Mythwind is sort of the same idea and that Stone Saga is the better evolution of Mythwind. I've got a review coming for this later. I will tell you they're very, very different games. Stone Saga is all about this sort of growth and survival and the exploration and this kind of world around you kind of story. Whereas Mythwind, again, open-ended, sort of open world, daily life kind of thing. There is story, there is world, there is growth, but this one is more sort of like the uh, sort of farm simulator kinds of games where you're living your life, getting money, using the money to expand, using the expansion to explore and learn a little bit more. There is some sort of small things together that do tie in or are similar to each other, but ultimately they're very different games. 
and Stone Saga, again, this is what I should be talking about because my number one crowdfunded game of 2023 was Stone Saga, and yeah, it's unreal. It's unlike anything I've played, and I cannot wait for this to get finished so I can just keep exploring and see how much more they've added, see what kinds of new mechanisms, new goals, new story comes out as I play through more of this. I know right now the game is in beta testing. If this sounds fun to you, you might reach out to Open Owl and try and jump in on that beta test because Stone Saga is really good. Keep an eye out for this one. So that's it. Those are my top five crowdfunded games of 2023. I hope you found something on that list that you liked. They are all very different styles of games. So there should be a little bit in there for all of you. I will continue to do my best to try and find new unique experiences that are coming to crowdfunding, both from big publishers as well as tinier publishers. Whole lot of fun on this list. Can't wait to see what's coming out this year. Thanks again for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I ask as always, please remember to like, subscribe, and click the bell icon below, and I'll see you all next time. Thanks.